So what can we learn from this particular site? This is the uh, Strathcona Community Garden. It's one of the oldest community gardens in Vancouver, but it really, for our purposes, exemplifies soils that were formed under marine conditions. And we're, we feel that we can correlate uh, the soils in this site to uh, Cloverdale and Langley soils that have been mapped in the lower Fraser Valley, and therefore learn from those soils in terms of how best to manage these urban uh, cousins of those soils. Art, what can you tell us about the Strathcona Community Garden? Well, Strathcona Community Garden is uh, situated in one of the oldest communities in the city of Vancouver. And Vancouver, like a lot of seaport cities, developed on marine influence materials as this part of Vancouver has in this community garden. The community garden itself is of historical interest in itself and it's the oldest community garden that we have in the city of Vancouver and it was hard won. In those days there was no precedent for using public land uh, for food production uh, by the community. What can we observe here in the pits? Well, uh, the, uh, I guess the problem with urban soils is that they're quite often modified and the first thing you have to do is try to figure out how much of this is natural and how much of it is due to human activity. And so if we look at uh, the soil here, it's obvious that there's been a fair bit of disturbance. We're seeing artifacts uh, down all the way through the profile. There's some rocks, even at some depth, there's pieces of pottery and glass that illustrate the fact that there's been uh, fill probably that's gone in here uh, in addition to human artifacts such as pottery and, and uh, metal materials, we also have these stones fairly shallow in the profile, which uh, we wouldn't expect in uh, most of these uh, Langley Cloverdale marine sediments. When you superimpose this black layer on the surface, the AH or AP horizon, which is darker in color as a result of organic matter, and or adding organic matter to this soil, as it is in most of our soils, is really a key, in this case, to try to give it good structure, good stable structure. And a lot of these soils that have been under grass for a long time, and you can see this profile is, is uh, uh, quite often a result of plant roots. And uh, usually in a city that that's, includes uh, grass, lawns, and it's a result of the annual production of roots and their decay and formation of humus. And uh, that's an uh, important uh, contributor to soil quality on these particular soils, that uh, um, stable organic matter that comes from long-term vegetation like this. So what soil factors at this site make it relevant for food production? Yeah, one of the key limitations that, that really needs to be discussed with these uh, marine type soils is uh, their drainage. And uh, the drainage can be influenced by internal soil properties, like on this site, and also by uh, surface topography. So where we're standing slopes uh, slightly down to the back of us here. And the fact that we have healthy apple trees in behind us here indicates that the drainage is not overly restricted here. It's not a bad, uh, badly drained site. Have we, uh, if, if we were just go over here about uh, 20 meters, we're into a place where it's kind of in a, a bowl shaped and it's very wet in that, in that area. Same type of soil, uh, but the topography makes a huge difference. Uh, the other thing that we have to be uh, concerned about in these soils is the uh, potential for soil compaction. Because they have silts and clays, they are subject to uh, compaction, either by foot traffic or deeper compaction by driving on the machinery and that sort of thing. And uh, if that happens, then roots can't, can't get down through the profile and water can't flow through the profile and the internal drainage is restricted. But in general, these soils uh, with good management uh, will have good fertility, good ability to retain water and nutrients, 
and they should be very, very productive, assuming that the drainage is adequate. And I think we can look around the site here and we can see evidence of that in the trees and, and, and the gardens around here. Yeah, one final note on this particular uh, site here, Glass, and that is that it's very common for people to disregard the quality of the soil that's already there and to bring in sand compost mixes and create raised beds or just to simply uh, cover the surface. And in my mind, it's a waste and it's, uh, it's something that we really need to avoid as long as we're confident that the soil itself is not contaminated by all the, the history on the site. Because the sand compost mixes that we see, while they're okay as growing media, um, they're not as good as this here, which has got a more loamy surface, better water holding and better nutrient holding capacity.